So uh, I'm going to uh, present, uh, make a presentation on Internet of Things today. And uh, what opportunities would it bring for all of us? And what is that uh, the various work which is happening in this sphere? And before I proceed with my presentation, I would like to, I'm sure people here in this room would understand what is it, what is, what does internet means, right? I'm sure everybody knows. And I'm, I'm sure everybody understands what is the difference between an internet and World Wide Web. Though we use these words very interchangeably, we sometimes call internet World Wide Web and we sometimes call web, World Wide Web as internet. Just to clear that understanding, I would like to briefly explain, it's very important to understand this discussion before we proceed. Right, what is the difference between internet and web? So internet, as we understand, is a physical layer or a network, right? Which basically is, uh, connects various switches and routers. And, uh, and, and basically it transports information from one point to another point, right? And uh, uh, basically it transports information much more securely, quickly and reliably, right? And the web, and the World Wide Web is an, is an application which sits on the top of this internet, right? So that the application that operates on top of internet, its primary role is to basically uh, provide interface that makes this information flowing across internet usable, so that we are able to view it properly, we are able to read it properly, and we use, you, able to make use of it. In this presentation, I would like to basically introduce what is this concept of internet of things, right? What is the state of art of Internet of Things? Few applications which are in a POC stage, which is proof of concept stage, which various companies are working on. And few concepts which are already there and we are using in our day-to-day -day lives and are being used by various organizations. Challenges in this field and of course the future opportunities. As we understand what is Internet, right? Internet for us means, right, anytime connection and anywhere connection. So which means, so uh, which means like when we are on the move, in the house, in the office, in the train, in the car, wherever we are, we are able to access information. There's a third dimension to this internet, which is basically anything connection. To any time connection and anywhere connection, there's a third dimension called anything connection. Now this anything connection is basically a human to human connection a machine to machine connection or a thing to thing or object to object. In Vodafone we call it machine to machine connection, right? So what I basically mean by that, from any time, any place, connectivity for anyone, we will have connectivity for anything. So instead of going to the net, there are machines which will speak to each other and will be able to communicate to each other and we will basically help us do our business or our daily course much more effectively and efficiently. So what does that mean? Basically, there's a very basic definition on Wikipedia. It's the Internet of Things, also called Internet of Objects, refers to wireless network between objects. Usually network will be wireless and self-configuring, such as household appliances, etc., etc. Now to give you a context, right, why Internet of Things is a big buzzword today in this uh, in this world today and what is what are various organizations doing to give you a perspective I would like to share that how many basically uh, devices are being connected on this internet there used to be around 500 million connected devices on this planet for approximately 6 billion people on this planet in around 2003 right which is a decade ago can anybody just guess how many devices would be connected today on internet? Any guess, wild guess, anybody? Well, yes. So just a wild guess, so there is approximately 6.8 billion people on this planet. And there are already more than 10 billion connected devices, right, which are available. Now, this is approximately three, almost two to three devices per person. But just imagine, there are places, right, even in Delhi or in India or in the world where the internet has not gone, right? So just imagine there would be more than four to five or maybe ten devices per person. Maybe in the urban city where the penetration of internet is more, so there would be more than five to ten devices. 
with the emergence of these smartphones the devices connected devices have gone up tremendously in the recent past so by to by 2020 it is estimated there will be around more than 50 billion devices for a population of 7.5 billion right which is which is just mind boggling so we can expect for every person on this planet there are five to six devices or seven devices which will be available other than your smartphones that you currently use a basic characteristics of internet of things is what does that internet of things mean matlab what is a what are the various element what are the various characteristics here so one is basically it's ambient ambient intelligence right which means that uh, all these elements or all these objects are autonomous intelligent entities which will act in full interoperability and will be able to auto organize themselves you know the trigger could be a context circumstance or environment etc which will trigger action and therefore you know it will get recorded somewhere in the device then there are flexible structure it's a open platform it's a platform uh, or a network ag uh, agnostic i mean it doesn't mean that you need to have a particular kind of a platform on your phone or your on your device it's an open architecture or it's a open platform it's complex access it has a complex access technology it validates verifies your information and allows you to basically access internet so that your information is secure your devices are secure it's event driven so which means there is a design the scheme depending on the need right so for example in your house right there is a device and whenever there is darkness outside outside the window automatically the light switches on in your house that's a very simple example which is a event driven example semantic sharing it's basically a machine to machine communication no human intervention is required there so machine will read receive and send messages on its own without even any with a defined logic of course but doesn't require any human intervention there so all of this basically you know constitutes the internet of things so these are the basic characteristics of internet of things so why internet of things what is that we need internet why is that it's so popular why are people you know uh, uh, talking so much about it because there is a huge demand for such activities let's say for example there is an organization who would want to improve its operational efficiency right so of course they would want to bring in have connected devices would want to improve their operational efficiency and of course all of us want to have improvement in our daily life we want to have improve our quality of life from a organizational perspective i would like to give you an example from a a a distribution company right so in the distribution company let's like say it could be a pharmaceutical company it could be a, a fmcg company like hindustan unilever a person goes to a shopkeeper takes a order on a handheld terminal and he uploads the information on a real time basis the real time basis information goes to the distributor point the distributor sends it from the distributor point the information goes to the carrying and forwarding agent the carrying and forwarding agent needs how many sqs of a particular product are required and how many trucks are required tomorrow for delivery so therefore he can plan it properly and at the benefit to the distributor is he no longer has to stock these material in his warehouse so no longer a norm that you need to carry inventory of 15 days or 20 days just imagine a distributor is a 10 crore distributor per month if the norm of 15 days inventory is relaxed how much free capital is available to him to grow his business so that's an opportunity that's an opp opportunity which organizations like levers procter and gamble coke pepsi of the world are have identified that leaves more and more ca working capital in the hands of the distributor right and they can really use this uh, uh, working capital much more efficiently in the market improve resource utilization example is power distribution companies i will share an example with you in the next slide better relationship between human and nature so using sens sensors to assist environmental environment protect uh, environmental protection by monitoring air water quality atmospheric and soil uh, conditions and even monitoring wildlife so in project tiger project save tiger you know there are project there are tigers which are who are rfid tagged and basically there are wildlife uh, people basically who are trying to basically understand where are their habitats they trying to understand their behaviors etc and they are able to track this, those uh, those uh, animals in the forest and of course forming an intellectual entity by integrating human society and physical systems so all of this there's a huge all of this creates a huge opportunity for internet of things in the market
there are various applications which are available in uh, domain of transportation, our own household, equipment in public place, virtual environment, biosensors taken by people, etc., etc. I would like to take you through a few scenarios here. First scenario, I mean, we are already talking of RFIDs, we are talking of unique identification code, we are talking of, you know, that Aadhaar card that everybody has, maybe that Aadhaar card may become digital, which is a social security ident identification number, unique for every person. A person may carry it, maybe tie it on his wrist as a wristband or maybe in a watch, and he can walk into a retail chain. So the first situation here is, when entering the door, scanners will identify the tag on the person's clothes, right? And that information is already stored because you go there every month to buy a, buy a grocery or stuff, and your choices, your preferences, et cetera, et cetera, are already available in the system. If there is a scheme, if you are going there to buy, let's say, a hair care product or a personal hygiene product, the schemes will automatically come to you on your phone. Maybe it will display it on the TV screens there. There's a scheme or there's an offer on a particular product, right? So that you can make your choices faster and you are able to make decisions faster there. Second situation, when goods in the market, when shopping in the market, the goods will introduce themselves. If there's a new product, automatically the information will flow or the person will go to that particular shelf to buy that product. Situation number three, when moving the goods, the reader will tell the staff to put more of that goods on the shop floor so that the people can come and buy. When paying for the goods, the microchip of the credit card communicate with the checkout reader. It automatically happens. There's no hu human intervention required. I'm, I'm sure a lot of people here would be amused, you know, this is very, very futuristic. And this is maybe 50, 100 years, or maybe you would see this in movies only. It is not possible in the real world. But I would share a real example in the next slide. And by the way, a lot of work is already happening in the previous slide, which I have shown. There's a large beverages company which sell soft drinks, right? And they place these refrigerators in various markets. And every refrigerator costs a lot of money, thousands of rupees for them. And if these refrigerators are not utilized properly in the market, what happens is the money goes waste, right? There's an unnecessary wastage in the system. Now, using Vodafone technology, what that organization has done, centrally at a place, the organization knows how many refrigerators are stocked or placed in which market, how many refrigerators are switched on, what is how many times a door is getting open, somebody is opening the door or closing the door. So that kind of uh, that kind of technology is already available and it is already deployed. So it is it's not a rocket science. It's basically a lot of work which is happening and there is a lot of opportunity for all of us here. Maybe you can. You would want to, you know, uh, uh, want to track maybe your asset, your uh, resources in the market. And since it's an entrepreneur's forum, and you would not have the luxury of having an IT manager or maybe a certain, a very, very large team to do it for you, there are organizations who can help you out, help you in doing this, and help you having a control on your business. Next scenario is utilities. I mean, there's a large uh, utilities companies in the, in the city called NDPL. I'm sure a lot of people know. They use around 45,000 to 50 sims from us. All these meters are digitized. Nobody goes to the market to take the meter reading there. And if somebody tries to tamper, there's a stamp, the information automatically flows to the control room that somebody has tampered with the meeting, reader, uh, meter reading. Second, if it is a high value customer, you can't afford to bill him after two months, right? If a large organization, factory, which runs a bill of crores of rupees, you can't extend him a credit of maybe two months. That billing happens on a 15-day cycle, on a fourth-line recycle. So it helps the power company, power distribution company to manage it working, manages it working capital well, reduces theft, helps him them reduce pilferage and leakages in the system. Actually, it can track which locality, which household, et cetera, et cetera, where the leakage is. From point A, point B, point C, they can actually map 100 units were transmitted, and at the end of point E, only 95 units have gone. So where have the five units, where, are the, where is the loss of five units? They can actually track that. Scenario three is transportation. I'm sure a lot of you would have read this news and would have also seen this in the TV, that Barack Obama, the US president, was test driving a vehicle or a car, which has this intelligent system of basically communicating with the cars around him in that area. 
It's nothing else, basically, internet on things. What is happening is a lot of automobile companies developing this, and this is in a POC stage, where every car, every device, or there will be a device in every car, and the cars would communicate to each other, right? What the car companies are trying to do is they're trying to help improve our driving experience. They want us to be safer, and they want to sell more. So just imagine this scenario. When there is a queue, the first car may tell the cars behind is there if there's an accident or just too much traffic, and this will eventually make intelligent navigation system. Replan the route of cars programmed to go down already saturated roads so you don't get stuck in traffic jams. Cars may help the driver to keep safe distance and may review, refuse dangerous act actions like you know, speeding if the weather conditions are not conducive. The cars may go on autopilot mode on highways, reducing the risk of fatigue to the driver. Cars will also be able to make, maintain themselves calling for the appropriate service based on self-diagnosis of the problem. We have a product called vehicle location uh, system or a vehicle tracking system, which is like you activate an ISD on your phone or a, uh, uh, ISD or any mobile internet pack. It's like a pack that you can activate on your phone. It helps you uh, track your resources and assets placed in the market. So for example, you have you, you have a large logistic company or you have a large fleet of cars and you can have it activated on your driver's phone. You can see as to how many, what is the idle time that the car has and what route is it, is it taking. For the example, let's the case, take the case of a cash management company which puts the money in the ATM from the bank, right? It goes to the bank in Connaught Place, picks up the money, goes to an ATM in, uh, let's say, Saket. There's a defined route that person can, can't change the route because it's such a huge cash that the person is carrying, crores or rupees in that car. The moment that person will deviate, the flash will automatically go to the controller that the person has deviated the route. It helps an organization to basically, uh, you know, Im Im help uh, get a have a secure system in place. So there are a lot of challenges. I'm sure people would have heard of IPv6, wherein it's a, a non-availability of IPv addresses, which is kindly, which is, which is kind of uh, reducing the speed of, uh, on internet of things. Though IPv6 is much more advanced, it's, it can actually uh, auto-configure and has a lot of safe security features. Sensors, since there are so many devices which are placed all over the world, in jungles, in roads, et cetera, et cetera, definitely they need to be charged and recharged on a regular basis. How to do it? The sensors have to, it has to be self-sustaining. How to generate electricity, electricity using environmental elements like you know, sound, airwaves, et cetera, et cetera. Managing and fostering rapid innovation is a challenge for the government. So there are, these are the few challenges. Of course, how to convince users that information of things or internet of things, technology will protect their data and privacy uh, and uh, when tracking. I mean, it will not go to anywhere. So future is bright, though there are challenges, but there definitely there are a lot of things which are available for uh, all of us in our day-to-day -day lives, traffic issues, production, logistics, retailing, resource planning, et cetera, et cetera. It's a huge opportunity. And that, that, the application that I shared, right, maybe it could be relevant for your, your business or could be a business opportunity for you to maybe look at this particular segment. As Vodafone, we have a dedicated division. We call it machine-to-machine -machine application in our systems, and we invest heavily into this. Because, as you see, the opportunity to providing a mobile phone to a person is 7.6 billion in this world. But the opportunity of placing SIMs in various de devices is fi uh, more than 50 billion, right? So you can just imagine the kind of opportunity which is there. If you would want to understand more on this, we have a booth outside. You are mo more than welcome to basically answer any of your queries. Thank you very much.